A show of hands, anyone born 1946 to 1964? Hello, boomers. What about birthdays from 1981 to 1996? Welcome, millennials. We're glad you're here. Anyone born after 1997 to 2010? Hi, Gen Z. You are the largest population clocking in at nearly 90 million people in the United States. And I wish I had the brain chip that you were born with. One might say I almost forgot anyone born between 1965 and 1980. Hey there, Gen X, you're my peeps, and this talk is for you. Well, I haven't forgotten you, though, it seems that almost everyone else has. Marketers, newscasters, advertisers, branders, and companies all seem to ignore or forget about Generation X. They don't spend money to advertise or mesmerize us. As a pop culture and media expert and a two-time Emmy-nominated television producer, I think we are all making a mistake with ignoring Generation X. I think we have been misunderstood and have a terrible branding problem. Perhaps we need to fire whoever branded us. Okay, Boomer, you're fired. As a card-carrying member of what Time Magazine dubbed in 1990, a generation with few heroes, no anthems, and no style to call their own, they called us the slacker generation. In what writer Joy Ellen Sauter wrote about us just last year, Generation X, a complete embarrassment. Labels that have written us off as having no significance and no contribution. As the Who said, people try to put us down. We're talking about my generation. In 1990, Home Alone was a box office success. While we all laughed, it was true for many of us in my generation, we were raised home alone. Because of a dual family income, or because we were from families of a divorce, we were the kids that went home after school with our own key, let ourselves in, and waited for our parents to come home. We are the latchkey kids who raised ourselves and probably raised our siblings too. Because only the Bradys had an Alice at home, our babysitter was Martha Quinn. After all, in our age group, video killed the radio star. And if you don't know who Martha Quinn is, you're definitely not Generation X. So Google it. My boyfriend was the Fonz, but he was always upstaged by the $6 million man. I was so upset that I had to stay home from school the day that the bionic woman was set to marry Steve Austin, but it was thwarted from her accident, which caused her amnesia, and she didn't remember him. Our worlds were centered around what we watched and when we could watch it. We learned that patience is a virtue while waiting an entire week for the continuation of our favorite shows. There was no binge watching or streaming video. And now, I don't want to sound like my grandfather from the silent generation born 1926 to 1945. I had to walk three miles in the snow to get to school, Jackie. You should be grateful lecture. Gen X had to get off the sofa and walk to the television to turn the dial and change the channel, as the remote control did not exist. Generation X's anthem, It Smells Like Teen Spirit by the late Kurt Cobain, that Rolling Stone called the unwilling spokesperson for our generation, who broke our spirit when he unmercilessly shot himself. His best lyrics entertain us, a true statement to our anthem at the time. Born out of our childhood isolation as we were the audience that hung out with our friends, listened to music, gathered to be entertained, and went to concerts. We had no internet or instant information, but we had free time and money in our pockets. Oprah was our therapist. 
We gathered to watch and not take center stage. The only famous gen uh, Xers of our generation are actually entertainers. Perfectly so. The JLo's, the Jennifer Aniston's, the Serena Williams, and the Joe Rogan's. Other than that, the reflection of our childhood, the need to be entertained from a behind the scenes, our leadership is mostly silent, yet not ineffective. The latchkey generation is what I would define as the unsupervised and forgotten generation. Mostly unseen and definitely not heard. We were the almost generation in so many ways. On the political front, this truth that Generation X has no voice and is an almost generation is also reflected. Boomers have occupied the White House for the past 26 years with a two-candidate boomer run again. Even Obama is a tail-end boomer, while he seemed young as a president that was 12 years ago of an eight-year term. Our generation has yet to claim the throne. As vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris checks many necessary boxes like a bubble scan card, she becomes the other problem our generation represents as the almost generation, making her kind of, sort of, almost a Gen Xer? Not. Millennials have taken their seat in both the House of Representatives and the Senate and have campaigned on the presidential level. Even Gen Z, who hasn't become fully of age to vote, is staging sit-ins in schools across the nation for values that don't align with, the, with their vision of their future. Our secret weapon is that we are underestimated. In my research of our behind-the-scenes Gen Xers, I learned that Gen X makes up the majority of the participation of the Electoral College. The Electoral College places the president in the position over the popular vote. From behind the scenes, Gen X is still in politics, even if you don't know all our names, as an example of the invisible influence that we wield. Because of the cultural influence of our childhoods and our teen years, we watch, we observe, we witness, and we integrate. And what we have done for our 50-some laps around the sun, mine being next week, give or take a few years on either side, we have integrated more technological leaps than any other generation. And as we compete for recognition that is rightfully ours in the laundry lists of almost, Gen X gets Elon Musk, the boomers have Jeff Bezos, another almost Gen Xer, not, and the millennials shoot up Mark Zuckerberg just as fast. My generation, we were the ones who shifted from the Polaroid camera to the disposable camera. To what? A camera in your cell phone? I wondered, why would you want a camera in your cell phone? To me, it was like combining the refrigerator of, with the stove. What would be the purpose? I know, I should have had a V8. Of course, you would call me a late adopter on that one. Remember, telephones were wired into the wall with a rotary dial with only one function when we were kids that the whole family shared and blasted a busy signal when the line was being used. Call waiting was a technological advancement. And as latchkey kids, we knew to carry dimes in our pockets as pay phones were the only source of calling our parents when we weren't home. Thus, ET phone home. As parents now, technology is encryptically passed on to our children while we photograph them in utero, making them the natural selfie nation. We entertained ourselves and entrained ourselves through technology, making us adaptable as we updated the gradient levels from Atari when Space Invaders was out of this world to Nintendo with the Mario Brothers to PlayStation. And for our love of music, we paid a penny for our albums through Columbia Records in the back of Parade Magazine and waited for the mail without Amazon Prime for several days at least for our records. No, our eight tracks. 
No, our cassettes. No, our CD CDs. There was, then there was Napster, which was also a real no-no. We lived by the U.S. mail and never felt like we were only living on a prayer. No instant anything like downloading music. Generation X knows how to delay gratification, resounding again our virtue of patience and resourcefulness while we waited. We didn't live by the delete button having learned a keyboard on a typewriter. We learned our mistakes are not as easy to cover up in an instantaneous world as we had to use white out and wait for it to dry. As a side note, quarantine has got nothing on us. Generation X, we're used to being alone. We know how to entertain ourselves. And being forgotten, no problem. We got this. While the millennials and their kid sister Gen Z duke it out with our parent generation, OK Boomer, in the workforce, politics, and pop culture, I ask myself, where is the voice of my misbranded generation, Generation X? The answer, suffering middle child syndrome. Or as Jan Brady said, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Even The Little Mermaid, released in 1989 during our late teenage years, the only Disney princess movie of our teen decade, Ariel, the main character, loses her voice. Coincidence? I think not. Even though this behind the scenes, middle child, almost forgotten, latchkey slacker generation of mine, ours, produces one third of the nation's income in spite of representing only a quarter of the whole population. Yes, we are small. Yes, we are mighty, and yes, we have money. So why do we Generation X have such poor branding? Reality does bite, and we bite back. We were told one thing as a generation, yet our experience was completely another. We were called the slacker generation, the truth. We came of, a, of working age during three recessions. One, when most of us were graduating college and entering the job market. Two, the forgotten about tech bubble bust in 2000, when many of us were starting families. And three, the housing crash of 2008, smack dab during our careers. And of course, we are on a joy ride right now to be determined as our retirement accounts hang in the balance. Our re repetitive economic traumas, along with our personal traumas, that can be identified with our great grandparents through the Great Depression, but rarely acknowledged in our own answer marching way of getting on with things born out of our latchkey kid style of survival. We were taught to consume as we were living in a material world. Truth, we are living the consequences of overconsumption. We were told we could do anything. Truth, yo, Adrian, just don't hit your head on the glass ceiling on the way up. Told one thing, sold another. Work hard, play hard. When it came to coming of age, our moms got the pill and we got AIDS. Sex wasn't freedom, it meant death. While our liberated mothers screamed equality, we learned duplicity. We were equally as quiet at work while we endured a culture that was not meant to be endured and no longer tolerated today. Reality was just another lap around the hamster wheel of look over there, not over here. And when we finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired, and tired of sick, we screamed, me too. Here is the truth about Generation X. Sandwiched between attention-grabbing millennials and competitive boomers, we learned discernment, dependability, and diplomacy making our generation the best managers in the workforce, adaptable to changing worlds and changing systems. We have patience to teach because we have always been learning. Our latchkey isolated childhoods taught our generation patience, resourcefulness, and ingenuity. We are funny. Thank you, Beavis and Butthead and Laverne and Shirley. We have a good BS detector. Thank you, Millie Vanilli. And we're not afraid to get dirty because we actually played outside. And we know how to have a good time. 
the unifying generation is a much better brand. After all, we had Live Aid. We know how to come together and coexist to solve the world's problems. And we are entrepreneurial enough to do it. There isn't a Gen Xer who didn't babysit, shovel snow, rake leaves, deliver newspapers, lifeguard, or wash cars for extra cash. Gen Xers, it is our time to declare a new brand and a new narrative that describes our generation. And it is also time for us to be seen and heard, even if we still don't like our picture to be taken. We are shape-shifting from the visible generation to the, from the invisible generation to the visible generation. The story put upon us as the anti-anthem anthem slacker is wrong. The don't care generation who has integrated multiple upgrades is actually the unifying generation. From smells like teen, teen spirit to eye of the tiger, we know how to rise up back on our feet again. Generation X is independent, influential, innovative, and integrative. We are most exceptional, essential, and excellent. Thank you, Bill and Ted. The story of Gen X is not over. We need a rebrand. And of course, we'll have to do it ourselves, like we do everything else. As Joseph Campbell describes in The Reluctant Hero, more Han Solo, less like Luke Skywalker. Like John McClane in Die Hard, the one who doesn't want to take the call unless he has to, it is now our time to take our call. Rise and shine, be seen and be heard. This is our invitation to our declaration of the unifying generation. Because what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and we have it to give. From behind the scenes, we will take our seat now front and center as Simple Minds sings, Don't You Forget About Me.